friends, Chanel here. This morning I'm here with Christy Kuttner. She's going to be talking with us about her career as a Reiki master and her business sitting pretty still. One of my favorite things about Christy is that she exudes love. You can feel it from a mile <laughs> away. She doesn't have to talk. She doesn't have to do anything. I think her- Thank you. You're so welcome. Her smile just sells it. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. When did you first discover that you were an empath? I have always been a very sensitive person and I like to talk about this because as a teacher I find that the more I open up and am vulnerable about being an empath, being sensitive, being an introvert, having anxiety, things like that, it allows people to connect with me and it gives them a space to not feel alone. A safe so, space. A safe space. Prior to studying Reiki, you were in healthcare. You were a dental hygienist? Mm -hmm. I still am. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. as, a, as like a part-time career? Yeah, I do it a um, couple days a week. What made you want to get into the field of healthcare? I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up like you need a solid job, you need a 401k, you sure. need insurance. Like, <laughs> dental hygiene was a good stable job pays well you know you get benefits but it wasn't your calling it wasn't my calling but I wouldn't have found Reiki and I wouldn't have been in the the shoes I'm in now without that journey because people are very very vulnerable in sure. my hands they're very fearful I've learned how to really be able to touch people without feeling awkward myself and making them feel very comforted and that's always come very easily for me. So now like teaching yoga and and doing Reiki, I mean a lot of times my students or my clients will say I feel so comforted and nurtured in your hands and that's because of what I do for a living. You know when I started teaching yoga I was like I don't want to clean teeth anymore, I don't want to do it. and I just want to teach yoga and I feel like no matter what you're doing for work, you can be a light worker. You can be cleaning the bathrooms <laughs> at Taco Bell and be a light worker. I mean, you run into those people like the woman who makes my coffee. She is a light worker. She she's so happy to see me. She knows my order. She's just so sweet and kind and loving and she's like spreading joy all Aww. over the world and she's a barista so it's <laughs> like yeah I'm a hygienist but I like to really make sure I bring that high energy high vibration into everything I do nobody really likes going to the dentist but I have to admit I absolutely love the feeling of like having my teeth clean I love hearing that I love having my teeth I cleaned. love it too I mean but there's a lot of people who well I think that the the problem for most people is they don't have calm gentle nurturers doing it <laughs> yeah. like I'm sure they've had bad experiences with people that don't know how to touch people yeah dental hygiene is actually the way I discovered Reiki when I'm cleaning teeth when someone would feel pain I would feel it into my hands mm. like a like a, almost like a shock or an electrical charge and I never understood what it was and you know at the time I was still living in Michigan so I was around no one who spoke of like energy work or anything like that. I was actually listening to a podcast I think it was on Hay House Radio and the woman was talking about Reiki I was like I wonder if that's what that is that I feel into my hands and I believe with Reiki it comes into your vortex when you're ready to learn it, when you're ready to receive it, when you're ready to become a teacher or anything like that. Like I was at the point where I was ready to expand in that direction. Before that, I might not have been. I noticed at the studio I, I did yoga at, they were having a training for Reiki and I asked about it and he said, um, you know, the teacher is, her name's Kelly and she's teaching a class later tonight. Why don't you come take her class and see if you vibe with her? And the minute I saw her, I was like, oh, I, I just want to, I'm like a sponge. I want everything she's, she's teaching. And her and I are business partners now, and we're very close friends. I did my level one with her, my level two, and my Reiki master with her. I did my level one, my level two, and my master over a five-year period. For me, I did thousands of hours before I even did the master. Does it typically take someone that long? We or? recommend that in our lineage. 
but it's taught differently in certain ones. Energy is all around us. We all have Reiki within us. So, you know, Reiki is in all of us. It's in everything, animals, everything around us. And it's channeling that universal life force energy through me as a practitioner. I'm just like a conduit. It's not coming from me to the person. You're channeling it through almost like a hose, one-way hose. It's going through to the person. In our trainings, we like to do a little bit of Tai Chi after the attunements. And the attunements are the sacred ceremony. It's so amazing when your Reiki master attunes you and opens your chakras and opens you to be that conduit. So what is the mentality that you're holding to obtain the energy? To be a Reiki practitioner, it's a lifestyle, so there's principles you live by. Did those principles create a certain energy that surrounds you based on your practices? Yes, because you want to be in your highest vibration too. Okay. And actually with the Reiki level one, you're taught to do only self-Reiki on yourself. So you are taught like a sequence of how to, to channel that energy and do it on yourself. Then you do 21 days cleanse between your level two where you can do it on others. Mm. So the priority is to do it on yourself. When I do a session, I'm talking to angels, I'm calling in guides, creating that space, that bubble for the person that I'm, I'm working on. I really feel like if everyone in the world was attuned and more aware of like their intuition and how to take care of themselves, we'd live in such a different world. You are a beautiful person. I'm so glad that it found you so that you can give it to other people. I love you for it. Oh, I love you too. About a month and a half ago, I was in a car accident, so I've been very sensitive. I've been working through an injury, and I had mentioned to Christy that I had never had Reiki and you know what I was going through with my body being really tense and being so uncomfortable. And so I had fantastic experience with her recently where she performed my first Reiki. It was such a beautiful connection, it, almost like we'd known each other our whole lives, <laughs> and we weren't even talking. I mean, for me, when I'm practicing, my intuition is very strong. So like messages will come through me for you. Right. Like remember about the artwork yeah. and like your healing. And that has just started to really cultivate more in the last year. And I think that's just because I'm really tapped into my intuition and that's what you're feeling, that connection, sure. where almost like my hand is melting into your arm. Well, it gave me chills. So after our session, we would kind of talked about my thought process during the experience, and she was on the exact same yeah, wavelength. we were thinking she the same thing. knew exactly what I was envisioning. Do you think that Reiki is as effective on, let's call them non-believers? Absolutely, because it's a stress relief. So everyone's experience is different. When you get someone to lay down and receive that nurturing energy, they're, they're going to benefit in whatever way they need to. Like I'm not necessarily sending it to certain areas in your body. It flows through me to you and the energy will go in your body where it needs to. So it will disperse wherever it needs to, to go through. So in every person that's going to be different and someone that's skeptical, maybe it's between the, the ears and the mind. One of my favorite things though is, because I mean I'm sure people would, like I could talk about Reiki and they'll be like, yeah whatever, like so woo woo, you know. I love like putting my hands on that person's back and like just watching the stress. They feel it. Yeah, they feel it. <laughs> and it's, it's awesome because I teach weekly classes and people will come in there like, just got out of traffic, they're like, you know, mm. whatever they do for a living, maybe a lawyer or something, they're grinding their teeth, they're tense, and I like, I get right up on them and just like my hands on their back and just hug their shoulders. The transformation in someone in 75 minutes, I have a smile on my face when I leave. I'm just like so in love with, with doing that and offering and giving that gift to people. When you gave me my first Reiki session, you had me choose some cards. Were they tarot cards? What kind of cards were we working with that day? Those are angel cards by Doreen Virtue. I believe in law of attraction. When you draw a card, that message is coming through 
hmm. what you need to hear. I feel like when you're doing a healing practice, like Reiki, um, acupuncture, something like that, where you're really tapped in and you pick a card or yoga, meditation, that message is really gonna come through, like what you need to pick and then, you know, sit for a minute and and absorb it and like maybe journal about it. I, I have cards all over my house and I pick them every morning as part of my ritual, but then throughout the day, my husband picks them, friends that come over pick them. I loved the cards that I'd picked because they mm -hmm. have stuck with me. They resonated so much with where I am in my life and how I connected with those ideas and that I needed to be focused on them. I was really excited that those were the cards I drew. Yeah, no, remember we, our reaction was like, oh, yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. And I charge the cards, so like tonight with the full moon, I'll put them out, cleanse them. I take them to my classes every week, and that's like people's favorite, they love that part mm -hmm. because it's, it's a time to like tune into your intuition. We get so caught up in what we're supposed to do, what we need to do next, that the answers are here and we're like it's too crazy on like what's, what's next to sure. even tune into that. So you also talked about how you teach yoga, mm -hmm. uh, specifically yin yoga. Mm -hmm. Yin yoga is a practice where you hold poses. It's, you, we only do, we do less poses because you're holding for about three to five minutes or longer. It's directed more into the fascia, connective tissue, ligaments, joints, so the yin tissues in the body. The muscles are the yang tissues. So like vinyasa, hatha yoga, you're still really engaging your muscles, you're doing more strength. Yin, you want your muscles as relaxed as possible, and you're using your own body weight to create more compression. It's an incredible practice for balancing out like a busy lifestyle and and it's very healing. When you're not teaching yoga, do you wake up and do a little bit of yoga every morning and get your body moving? Is that your ritual for the day? Is you kind of start with your meditation, your yoga, and your Reiki? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, in fact, I just wrote a blog post about this because I just went home to my visit my family. And normally I'm still pretty strict about like I do my 30 minutes of yoga and I do my walk every day and my meditation and I just needed a break from rituals like I, I my body was just asking for that and that's okay like I gorged on chips because <laughs> I wanted them um, but naturally I still did it my meditation wasn't me sitting there it was me having coffee with my dad and just staring out the window. I was decompressing, processing. And then naturally I just needed to like move my body. So it wasn't like a formatted class or anything, but I you know, needed to stretch and stuff like that. When I wake up, the very first thing I do in the morning before I even get out of bed is put my hands on my belly and my heart and just and do some Reiki and ask myself like what do you need today tuning into the miracles that are in the subtleties of life who you're gonna run into who's gonna call you who's gonna email you who you're just gonna randomly run into at the gas station what you're gonna see on your computer that you needed to see like being really tapped in and tuned into the miracles that happen every day that are part of our journey. You had mentioned that you perform Reiki on yourself. Have you had other people perform it since you've been a Reiki master? Like, do you do you regularly have other people doing oh, Reiki yeah. for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it a That's big, important. Is it a big difference? Like, do you feel a difference in having someone else share oh, yeah. their energy with you? Mm -hmm. I want to start doing it every two weeks, having a session. Nice. And I do it on myself every day. It's like, you know, washing your own hair or going to have your hair washed. <laughs> Like, it's such an, a gift and, like, you know, it's it's a form of self-care. So, Christy, you told us that you're a morning person. What time do you wake up? Oh, and I've always been a morning person. My mom will laugh because she'll definitely watch this interview. <laughs> um, I wake up around 5.36. Beautiful. But she told me when I was little, I used to wake up uh, before I was even in school. I, I have a brother who's three years older than I am. And I would wake up with him 
and like wait out the school bus with him. Aww. And and she's like, you better do that when you have to go to school. And, but I've always been a morning person. It feels so good, right? Yeah. It feels good to like take on the day, wake up with the sun. Such a but 8.30 p.m.? Yeah, you're out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the bed, yeah. reading, getting ready to go to That's sleep. That's good. I, like, yeah. I love that practice. I love being able to wake up with the sun and go to sleep with the sunset. Yeah. It's very, it's comforting. So do you need coffee in the morning or is that like throw off your energy? Like does that throw off your like zen energy drinking coffee? Um, well, I have a love-hate relationship with coffee. Me too. <laughs> I feel like there's an amount that makes me a better human. But then when I cross that amount, then I'm a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. So like now I do, my favorite order is a um, Americano. And then I get t three shots of decaf and one shot of regular and nice. then almond milk. Balance it out. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to talk about sitting pretty still. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the pieces that you sell. It's a me meditation cushion. cushion. Mm -hmm. um, what did you tell me was in it? What did you stuff this sucker I with? I get rice hulls from a local farm, local farmer. So it has like really good support, but it's also really like like cushy. cushy. Like mm -hmm. it, it can conform really well to to movement. Mm -hmm. um, earlier, you were showing me some of the really great ways to use it, like the positioning and where to place it, and how you can lay on it and like wrap yourself around it. <laughs> um, how you can meditate with it. Um, what other products do uh, do you make with your company, Sitting Pretty Still? I make I hand make uh, soy candles, and they each have. They're insanely yeah. good, by the way. She gave me one and I died about the smell. Yes, Sorry. they're amazing. <laughs> and uh, I put little secret messages in each one. So I can't wait to get to yeah, the bottom. you get your message. And, um, and right now we're just, we just do the cushions and the candles. Our mission is of Sitting Pretty Still is to uh, promote self-care and relaxation mm. and it being a practice so our products really inspire people to like create a little space in their home where they can come to and um, relax and meditate do yoga just feel good and have their own little corner nook and i am inspired by like super cozy like bubble baths and blankets and you know, pillows and, and pretty stuff like that. So you will probably see more products as, as we go. I'm super excited. These pillows really uh, impressed me and I'm really excited. This is one of one of her last ones of this model. She's got new fabrics coming out. She's gonna make mm -hmm. other cool designs for you. She has a bunch of other different designs too. Um, I, I don't know, if you're into meditation and being mindful and just mm -hmm. sitting with your thoughts is probably something you wanna grab. I've got one more question for you. Do you know what your spirit animal is? Yes. Tell me. My spirit animal is a koala bear. That's wonderful. Yeah. I, that's got to be like the most comforting of all potential spirit animals. Well, they are. They're, I like eating leaves. <laughs> and, and I talk really slow. I'm like, you know, just super, just a slow moving human, but they're just chill. I just found out that mine is a butterfly. Oh, How incredible is that? That's amazing. Yeah, transformation. Yeah, for I sure. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, you know, mine could change over time, but for right now, it's definitely a koala bear. Now I cannot stop thinking about you being a koala bear. <laughs> such a koala bear. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you for your energy. Thank yeah. you for the tea. Thank you for your beautiful home and having us here. I really think that what you do comes from the soul and I can mm -hmm. feel your heart and passion with everything you do. And I appreciate you for that. Thank oh. you so much. And I just want to acknowledge you as well because what you're offering to the world. Like the minute I met you, I just felt, I feel like we've known each other forever. I love that. And, and just, I, I agree. Like you um, exude that love and, and kindness and just bringing all this information to other people and amazing, both you and your husband. So oh. I'm really, really happy you came into my life. Thank you for being you. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.